And these colours splashed all the way around Hampden Park. Sometimes wonder how they can get up there and stay up. To look like the heavy version of the Andrew Sisters. Well, there we are. There's a better shot of them now. And I think everybody is now looking towards the tunnel and indeed out come the team the team going to their respective half for the presentation We were assured, and there is the Prime Minister, Mrs. Thatcher, making her first public appearance. She's been at Hamden since about quarter to one, and that is the first view we've had of her since she arrived. She's had lunch, and I think she's eagerly anticipating seeing a stirring and exciting game, and I, I hope she thoroughly enjoys herself. supporters from both sides making the noises as the presentation party comes out Mr. Dennis Thatcher has followed in the rear there's Willie Ross who used to be the Secretary of State for Scotland chatting different political party of course but uh, on a football occasion that rapport exists in the expectancy of a fine football match Scotland the Braves to signify the 103rd Scottish Cup final. the brave a stirring song the entire box of dignitaries standing up as it was played and now the presentation of players all down the line they go must be very nervous out there Dave Bowman, Jim McAnally playing against the club that he left some years ago. David Neary, young Kevin Gallagher, whose grandfather Patsy Gallagher was one of the greats of the Celtic side of former years. Damon Bannon, regarded by many, including Ali McLeod, beside me, as one of the key players. Mark McGee, Billy Stark, Paul McStay, the Football Writers Player of the Year, Mick McCarthy, who's had a, an up and down season because of injury, largely, Andy Walker, the very prolific goal scorer, with the Celtic chairman in the foreground. the rock against Tommy Burns and uh, Billy McNeil looking better at a splendid winning his favour and a smart suit made for the occasion oh he's got a lot of experience now Billy Jim McLean's at the other end looking as impassive as ever somebody said Jim there's a bullet your back with John Sunround I might even take it on for that matter. And also the manager. It'd be interesting if you tripped over our camera table there, but actually before the game. 
Celtic to their end, Dundee United to theirs. We're mentioning Bannon, but I, I suppose the only areas of the ground which we were perturbed about were the penalty areas, which were a little bit bare. So it might be just a, a possibility of rather silly mistakes happening on it. Yeah, I, when I look at the teams, I just wonder where they're going to play Aiken. They've got three central defenders lined up. I'm wondering whether they'll play Aiken in the front of the two or behind them, because it's a very vital area. Because that's the new United strength, is this midfield, where they'll come thundering through. Well, there is the team with Roy Aiken, Captain Roy, who plays in midfield for Scotland, can play anywhere for Celtic, but has, of course, been holding their defence together playing with young men this season and of course with the defence having to change occasionally he has been very much the mainstay of the side in defence the possibility would be though if the, the course of the game were running against Celtic for Roy Aiken to push forward Dundee United again that's their side um, Dave Bowman who's been converted from midfield into uh, an outright defender, Morris Balfour's very intelligent player. Jim McAnally's role, vital one, uh, Ali. Yeah, Mac McAnally is the one ball winner on in their team. And I'll be interested to see, I know Bannon winds up with number seven, but I think he'll play in the left. I'll be most surprised if he doesn't. But Jim turns up with new ideas at every game, so he might just play in the outside right position. Yes, when you're dealing with a manager like... Um, Jim McLean and of course Billy McNeil but I think particularly McLean you've really got to wait until a ball is kicked before you try to discern an actual formation that the game is, at, is going to be played for well, that's correct Jim will have made up his mind he'll play one way against the wind and the other way with it so he'll depend on which, whether he wins the toss or not there's a referee today George Smith from Edinburgh one of the highlights of his career this will be coming to a Scottish Cup final and I think everybody hopes that he has a good game that he stamps his authority early on that he gets the best out of the players that there is no indiscipline uh, this game will be seen eventually throughout the world it is a showpiece and I think the referee will be very conscious of that By the way, the, these things work out. I think everybody's a bit jittery because everything was over much more quickly than they might have budgeted for. So the, to hold back the toss up, here it is now, Morris Malpas, Roy Aiken. All right, Ali, quickly on the spot, which way would you kick if you won the toss? If I was in D United, I would take a chance and play against the wind for the first half and just hope to contain Celtic for the opening 10 minutes. Well, the D United have won the toss. And I think you're right. I think the, the staying as they are, the play against the win. That's you winning one nothing. You can still hear the constant barrage of noise from the terracing. That growl of anticipation rising to the crescendo of shrieks. And the volume of support, in particular for Celtic, is enormous. Of a crowd of 75,310, to be absolutely precise, that is the official figure given for Hampton now in capacity. Celtic have about 60,000 supporters there. Celtic in their centenary year, Dundee United 21 years younger, almost an infant by comparison, different styles but the same hunger to win the 103rd Scottish Cup final a brilliant McStay but just taken very quickly by Jim McAnally and there is Alan McKnight this is something that perhaps we have not emphasized the coming of young Alan McKnight rather surprisingly into this final side I'm sure McKnight was delighted to get his first cup to the ball. Pull it, he's saying.
Bit of a tussle before the ball, lots of them there. Villa. Oh, he's not been given time to bring that down. There was no free kick in at Barron. Looks clearly with that is the free kick. Quickly taken. Morris. You saw him and Bannon in that kind of left midfield row there. I think you'll see a lot of that. He's got to be accurate. <laughs> Billy Thompson trying to stop that into the wind. Another foul there, I think. Uh, Patelain and the big spin backing in. Nick McCarthy. He'll be in Germany for the European Championships, of course. I want to Miller. Morris Belfast looking after Miller. That's Kevin Gallagher. First real touch of it. Free kick. George Smith right up with the play, and as I said, it's important for him to stamp his authority on this match immediately. I nice stuck there by Federlin, and he didn't know where the ball had gone, though. Well, Ali, the underfoot conditions obviously are very good, but I think that wind is, in fact, very tricky indeed. Yes, it's, it's really at the moment the corner flags are not blowing very strong. I think it's now swirling round and round. The both teams are just gradually settling down now. In the next five minutes, we should both be ready to go. Fun coming all the way back. Well, if we're going to get little touches of football, we've got to be smarter than that. There's Mick McCarthy. First corner of the match and a very good counter-attack by Dundee United coming from Jim McInerney. Look at the way he thrust himself forward here. That wasn't a bad ball at all. There were two men who could have gone for it. Corner kick. Billy McKinley getting to it, and that's off the line. Of all people, Paul McStay. That was Paul McStay on the line. He doesn't do that all that often. Another corner kick. Oh, just watch this McStay at the left-hand post, and there he was. The midfield player back there as a fullback. I think Big Billy ought to give him a bonus for that one. That's McKinley. Beyond Patelainen. No. So, oh, he loved that. The ball pulling into him. Getting a good grip of it, and with this wind, I wouldn't be a goalkeeper out there for the life of me. This is Rogan. Let's get away with that. That's in Rogan. Well, that was young Billy McKinley, Ali, getting in there. Good tackle by him. Yeah. He's Find it for the first 10 minutes is either going to make or break him in this game. And he's settling down now. A Joe Miller corner. McCarthy was up for it. And pushing, I think, is played by McCarthy. There's McCarthy going all the way back. The Celtic are, in fact, playing the three at the back, are they? Yes, sir. They're not taking any chances against this Dundee United. I would just say that that near miss that Dundee United had, I felt the goalie should have come for the ball.
Just over five minutes gone, still no scoring. Makaveni, the tackling is very quick and incisive. Gallagher yeah, beautifully done. Ferguson, Gallagher again, a great tackle by Aiken. And he keeps his cool. Well, Gallagher has always got a threat, but just at the end there, Roy treated him, well, he, I think Kevin was almost treated like a schoolboy, the way he just pushed him aside there, but uh, I think Aiken has got to watch that threat. Ferguson. Malfurst. United, Evan Bannon. Van der Leyden. Now, McKinley and McAnally have been picking up well in midfield. Ferguson lying deep offside. And I think I would suggest that uh, when that the United win possession in midfield, you will see players like Gallagher there, Van der Leyden, and Ferguson. Every year's forward, finding out trying to open up the defence. I think both Celtic players challenging for that, but also the United head. Van Sorogan. But that wasn't a clever tackle at all by Ferguson and has gone right over. Anton Rogan there has played very well for Celtic uh, this season. He comes forward intelligently. He's very, very good in the air uh, for set positions because Celtic try and get balls thrown towards the far post to him. watching it very tentatively and I think the free kick is foul on Aiken that's all the way through to Thompson Billy Thompson oh dear you talk about a Hamden hoodoo Billy has actually never been in a winning side at Hampden Park. And the United Austin Murren six times has been here and lost every time. Magnificent ball by McPay. Just a bit too much. Yeah, it's applauded and rightly so by Joe Miller. That in fact was Paul McStay's first real positive contribution in the game. Ali. Yes, I, I think that uh, the D United have actually settled down better than Celtic. But it's understandable because Celtic, with this strong win, are finding the passing just slightly. That's McKinley. Malpas. in the way the race is on or oh, the ball is really speeding through very fast indeed try to launch that again down to the right towards Gallagher Burns I think the game is something crying out for some cool football in midfield. Burns is the type who can't provide it. Miller. McIverney. McKinley just trying a little bit too much and Bowman stepping in. White. That might be a throw. Blue 
Walker. Try to play for the corner kick, I think. Bowman. Carty. There's McKinley. Tell you what, that youngster's playing very coolly out there. Adelainen. To McKinley. McInally. That's got that away, and there is the very experienced figure of the oldest man in the field, Paul Hegarty. And the Bannon. I've seen very much of Bannon so far. Gave me the impression he simply wanted to get rid of that ball that time. Not much else. Joe Miller. We're talking about Joe just at the start of the game as to whether they might have preferred Billy Stark with all his experience. Joe is such a fine player. Oh, just taken away. The stay came up. Here's Miller. Overland by Morris Ponica. Celtic's first of the game. 12 minutes gone, still no scoring. Fellow with it, on towards McCarthy, Tommy Bunn, can't get the shot in, and there's Bannon. Gallagher, all of these own. Beautiful stop there by McStay again. Rogan. Bowman watching, trying to be patient. And I think that came straight off the head of the Celtic player, yes. No kick. There were some stories uh, south of the border anyway, certainly splashed at Frank McAvenny there. It was very unsettled at Celtic Park, but I may just have been one of these occasions where a reporter simply picked up the wrong foot. Bannon. Should have run by Bannon. Woof. McKinley was going for that. Walker. Obviously, the players finding it difficult to get immediate contro control. The ball looks very light. Bowman. Good overlap. On a kick. And the United playing very intelligently out of defence. They're trying the long ball, but they are bidding it as well. Was 15 minutes gone. Knight took that superbly. A real pressure cross, and he doesn't look at all for Tom. Ali. Yeah, that's it. Now the young lad's now got his confidence, and he's coming for the ball. That first corner, which it was a near miss, he just seemed to freeze. But again, the young lad with the D United's playing very well. The young lad McKinley, and he settled down possibly better than anyone else in the United side. The game now very even. Just over 15 minutes gone, still no scoring. Burns. On a kick. And back will come everybody on the Dundee United side, Patelain and included, as the Celtic support take up their coral support. And this backing, as Joe Miller takes a corner. goes and just taken there by Billy Thompson that wasn't an easy ball at all to take it was buzzing in on top of him Bannon offside there it is and there was McAvenny doing extremely well to get up there and you saw the close attention on a confident looking goalkeeper
goalkeepers on the other hand haven't really been tested all that much to Silva bomber to Texas that looks like uh, David Neri who's down there yes an ankle knock no he's all right the physio did come to the line but he's waving him away Gallagher stay running into trouble McInally coming up very quickly on him Morris well taken by Malpas who decides to come forward the United captain Madalainen United though lost the initiative of that bus it's McKinley playing extremely well superb ball Gallagher that's another corner tell you what the boy McKinley is very impressive Alan yes he's he's really settled down very well and the right side of the field is doing extremely well I'm most surprised that Chelsea are playing Aiken behind the back men especially with the wind Derek White at the near post Paul McStay tucked in behind him back to Lane and, and away by McAvetti Walker here's Morris neatly taken you see McAnally picking up a great deal and there's nobody far right wasted ball by Bannon Gallagher Ferguson that's Hegarty alongside of Fadalainen well that could have gone back to Billy Thompson but a ball like that it might have bounced very awkwardly for the keeper putting it back like that called out by Miller rather protesting the fact Joe Miller, one of the significant Billy McNeil buys in his transformation of the Celtic team. Race is on, and that is too strong. Well, again, Roy Aitken wasn't taking any chances at all. I thought that ball may have gone right over the goal line. I'm sure Celtic and uh, Roy Aiken there has every confidence in the goalkeeper but the very fact that they've had that change early you know it can't be uh, all that happier situation for them there's Hegarty coming up McKinley at the back I'd like to see Burns playing more in the game because Burns and McStay are the two guys in the midfield for Celtic who can really slow this game down to suit them but at the moment, Dundee United are the more, I would say, the better side at the moment. That's a race on again, and great work again by Roy Aiken. Looking right into the sun that time, kind of been easy, Ferguson. Yes, well, they really are stretching the Celtic defence when they put the ball out to the flanks. Derek White was really extended to get to that. Not much exchange in that. Alan McKnight, one of the players whose international career has been helped by coming to Parkhead. Day hasn't got into the game yet seen just one pass of any note Bannon what well, I've done well McInally no the angle was all wrong idea was right 
You had to put it wide. McAvenny on the far side. Or McStay. There's more like McStay. McAvenny, and that must be. Oh, just pushed away. Oh, what a miss. The best chance of the game so far. The pressure's still on. No, it all ended, and that was really a dreadful miss. Now, oh, the superb play by McStay in midfield, the ball by McAvenny, almost perfection. And that really should have been put away by Miller. He seemed to get up too high, Ali, and down on top of it. It looks as if it, the, the hardest thing to do was miss it. I mean, it's a magnificent play by McStay, but how he missed it. I mean, he got over the ball and headed it down, but he really got it in the second bounce. Well, there's another shot of it. That lovely side-footed pass there, outside a foot pass. Billy Thompson beaten, and Miller coming in there, put it down almost at his feet. His own feet at that. Well, there, Paul McStay, almost a classic profile of him, and a classic profile of how to come from midfield and break a defence out of nothing. By the way, that's the second time that David Neri has been down. He did require attention that time. And he is limping. There he is. Trying to flex the joints again. like the powder hole sprint Joe Miller I think he got the edge on that race Tommy Burns that's a useful ball again oh up and under a body field effort Derek White somebody actually voted him in the papers this week the, the sexiest Celtic player he didn't have votes like that in your day, Ali. No, I wouldn't have voted that anyway. Well, you're very modest. Kevin Gallagher picking it up. Aiken goes with them. And it'll be another corner. Aiken is obviously very carefully watching uh, Kevin Gallagher. That's a real threat, they realise. Yeah, he's the danger man. But Celtic have lifted the game slightly since McStay's pass. And really, they're now starting to motor. Almost as if suddenly they've realised it's the cup final. That's McKinley. Served by Vic McCarthy. Oh. I don't know who had the first call for that. Left with faces to match their jerseys. Slip stay again. Picked off by Hegarty. Here's Gallagher. I think that ball, well, some of the players thought it had gone over. And I think what Gallagher is trying to get over is that Patalainen wasn't inside for the ball across. It's interesting at the moment, John D. and I have switched nearly into the midfield since his injury. So he gets over his injury. They brought Mal pass into centre half. And David Neri walking this off. We did notice he went down twice. 
wasn't looking a ball comfortable and that could be a useful ball Bones not so kind Rogan Foreman fights back this is a crucial period for Celtic Alley because as you say they are tramping and they just begin to look impressive Oh yes, they've started to motor a bit. The left side of the field still not operating as well as the right. Oh, too much. Now, David Neri is limping, um, and there are two subs warming up. John Clark and Sturrock. Tragedy for United if they're to lose him at this stage. There's Emmett Bannon. Made by Aiken. There is Neri. Seems to take that all right. McStay. This time Andy Walker gets on it. There's Bowman though. Buns. In comes Ferguson. Oh, you can't get any cooler than that. Shows you good understanding of the fence when you can get away with a move like that. That's Morris. Tommy Burns. United have pulled everybody back behind the ball. Val Patelena. Morris deciding to probe, there is Paul McStay, and not the kind of pass that they expect of them. Kind of apologetic shake of the head. Well, I see Dave Davies back at his position now, Ali. Yes, it looks as if it's an off machine and he's run it off. It would have been a shame if he'd had to come off. Ellie just dabbed that through, but Celtic looking impressive in central defence at the moment. Free kick. Just a slight uh, hint of a niggle there between Bannon and McAvenny. McCarthy looking very good in the air and offside. Exactly 15 minutes to have time, that's the scoreline. The best chance of the game, I think, having fallen to Joe Miller of Celtic. Bannon. Galakas, Roy Aiken, thumping but fair tackle. There's Bannon. Galaka. Back comes McStay. And Roy Aiken, in fact, Ali is playing very well for Celtic. Yes, it's his coolness at the moment. It, it's pulling them through. But Dundee United must be happy with the way things have gone so far. It's loose and there is Burns. Playing that ball to his left foot. There's the one two. Now pass following right across and I think handball. Tommy Burns having forced to the right hand side there. He's not naturally right footed. He's going to make it off for turning round and of course he had. Alpha's breathing down his neck. Here's McAnally. Bannon and several thoughts about that. 
Oh, no. Patalena not so good when he has to come back deep and try to create. He's better in the air or quick touches in the penalty area. Offside, Dandy Walker. Free kick. Celtic free kick this time. Hegarty again. Said the oldest man in the park at 33. It's quite getting in now, Aiken. Delightful play by Celtic that time. They did get the opening, and Morris who likes to come forward. There's Buttons at the wrong side of him again. Morris trying to fight it in. Referee still ways play on. Logan. Oh, that's not a bad shot. Uh, I saw him doing that against Hearts not so long ago at Tynecastle. He hit the ball very sweetly with his left foot. Well, it looks as if at the moment that's the only way the goals are going to come, is from a knockout and a shot from a defender, because both defences are very tight. Yes, he struck that well, yes. just swirled away. really picked up the pace of the game oh delightful stuff by Miller oh oh the finish simply did not match the approach he does it well though he has a lovely natural kind of Tanner ball ability to body swerve and wriggle his way into a penalty area there's Patalainen he did well he wants to lay to the side Gallica Feels for a penalty, but the referee rightly waiting play on. No complaints from the Dundee United players. And there was a challenge. Yes, he played the ball and the man went after that. Gallagher almost getting away. Well, you always get the impression of Kevin Gallagher that he's going to get really fast to defend. This afternoon, I'm talking about Celtic have just been clipping his wing. Here's Bowman. Clustered and tight down there. Nothing had got men back. Now Miller. Oh, nearly fully recovered now. The D United's longest serving player back, I think, to full mobility. Gallagher on the left this time. He kick, yes. He hasn't yet broken through, but the promise is always there, Alex. Yes, it's Miller and him are doing bit of banning, are doing very similar jobs. They're doing well up to the final bit and then let down. Bannon free kick. David Neri, the up and under. Bannon took that beautifully. That's a very good ball indeed. Great play by Bannon. To bring it down, 
swing round and get the cross over in that extremely limited space is a play of the highest quality. Billy McKinley, shorter with that. Youngster seems to have gone out of the game temporarily. I think the play, Celtic picked up the play, saw the youngster has slightly lost the play. Here's Ferguson. Eddie. Magdalene in going for this. Aiken with him. Three ways play on. There's no use Magdalene complaining. I think it's a free kick, yeah. Free kick to Celtic. Chris Morris. Bun. Morris always lying handy on the right. Looks kind of nervy now. Now this is youngster McKinley. He got out of that very well. Free kick. Very late. Very cumbersome tackle. I think the referee rightly having a word with McCarthy about that. Just the gentle reprimand. It'll get stronger the next time. to Badalene and he got the touch this time Ferguson very very close indeed that's good jumping by the big pin really showing you his value there look a good leap and there was Ferguson yeah well the ball was going away from him all the time and all he could do was flick out that at the uh, underneath it just to try and flick it back Good point one for him. And McKinley again. Very cool play. Patalainen. McAnally broken up easily. Now done. Miller. Rogan. That's an excellent ball in Belfast is there. Higgerty. Miller trying to wriggle his way in. Bowman going with him. Malpass. Twice in 15 seconds using his head to great effect in the box. Nice touch to Pandalainen. To Gallagher. There's Gallagher. Nice little double shuffle. And that's a corner kick. Roy Aiken complaining that he didn't uh, touch that. The Celtic player McCarthy didn't touch it. No complaint from McCarthy. That was a good uh, piece of football on either side, Ali. Both, both teams are very, very evenly matched at the moment. Very, very evenly matched. So, McKinley again. There's the touch by Badalainen and McKnight, confident again. I'll say on the occasions that this goalkeeper has come into the Celtic side, I don't think he's ever let his club down. Let's stay. Here's Morris. Did that easily. Hegarty left for dead. Joe Miller is there, and there is Thompson.
you know, it does occur to me that playing with the wind is an advantage, but not 100% an advantage. They're finding it difficult yes. to measure the passes, well, starting at this stage. Most teams like playing against the wind, but I think that in a cup final, you know, that wind helps you considerably. And it'll be to Dundee United advantage if they get to half time. And we are about uh, three minutes away from half time. Still no scoring. Burns. Miller. Burns. Well, that's a better ball, and look at all that space that Morris had. Yes. Thompson, very crosses the other way. He got behind that. That's Patelainen. Bannon coming up on it a bit late. I think, uh, in fact, George Smith is giving the free kick for that. Raymond Bannon's a very good interceptor. He's very good in a, a defensive situation like that. But he's not a good tackler. He intercepts well, but he's got a clumsy tackler. There's Malthus, there's Patelainen. Oh, Gallagher. We did that beautifully, and that was late. I think the referee is perhaps wanting one of these days when he doesn't officially caution anybody. I think it's been very sportingly played, mind you. The, the free kicks have not been anything vicious at all. It's been one of the most sporting finals so far. This and very even, as you said, Bowman. Raymond <laughs> Batten. <laughs> Little back dealer there. Batalainen. No, the free kick was before that, and I don't think McCarthy was too happy with that attention. There's Bannon again. Gallagher. That'll be a bit too strong. Well, the wind, I don't know what it was like down there. We've been looking at the corner flags, and Ali is right. Not very windy, uh, according to that sign at the corner flag. It's windy up here, our papers are blowing away, and there we are. That's a better indicator of it. Billy Thompson. Rogan missing out there. And Ferguson a little bit hasty with that pass forward. Well, according to our utterly reliable BBC watch, we've played 45 minutes. There will be a certain amount of stoppage time. Aiken, and that was Rogan creeping into space. Hidden. Miller. Useful ball again, Malthus. Did that well, Bowman coming in. McAnally, there's a nice little touch through, and there is Thompson. Took a bit of courage to go down to the feet like that because Miller very fairly had decided he could go after the ball. Nice little one two, and watch this. And as we speak on that slow motion replay. So the halftime whistle goes, no scoring. The major feature of the game is the lack of chances or opportunities that either side have had, particularly when the defences have been playing exceptionally well. Um, I don't think too many nerves, as exemplified by young uh, Billy McKinley. Uh, Celtic, I think, had the best chance, Ali, but uh, overall feeling. 
overall feeling that a draw at the moment is the, the, the right result. But I think Celtic will be disappointed because I think now Dundee United have the conditions. I must say, the overhead conditions are absolutely superb. There's hardly a cloud in the sky and there's the great roar of approval as Celtic come out. I just wonder, getting back to the Peter Grant situation, how touch and go it was, and if it was the right kind of psychological thing to do to build up the possibility of him playing at all. Well, I think it's a bit of a blow to Billy, because in his midfield he has all the skill in the world today, but he hasn't had someone who's got that absolute will to win that Grant's got. And I think the difference in the sides at the moment is the McAnally and McKinley in the Dundee United side in the first half of battle, but they're both young guys, and maybe in the end, Celtic, who I think, maybe overall in the first half, just edged it. And so we're almost uh, at the start of the second half. No changes as we can discern. Dundee United, starting the second half, Score still nothing each. Damon Bannon. Morris Malthus has only been missed one game this season, and that was the suspension after the replay in Aberdeen. to Ferguson a oh, nice play by McCarthy there's certainly no shortage of confidence in the defences that's for sure Kevin Gallagher has been running well at this uh, Celtic defence Utilising the win for the first time in this half, David Bannon, Badalainen. Just lacked a little conviction, and they went the way he went after that. shouldn't have got into that position, Kevin Gallagher. Free kick. And Gallagher really badly done there. I, I think it was a sheer mistiming of the tackle. A high one. And Aiken will certainly be booked for that, deservedly so. That's it. Why he's getting his name in the book now. Well, I think like all players, he indicates to the referee that it was his first tackle, first real offence. In fact, he's played superbly well. He really ought not to argue with referees. He's going to book him anyway. I'm talking about will to win. It's there in Roy Aiken, that's for sure. So, three kick for United. And with a strong wind at their back, could be interesting. Bannon can hit them, so can Patalainen. Bannon taking it. Well, he found the gap, all right. Somebody must have moved out. In fact, the Dundee United player very cleverly moves out of the way. That was a very intelligent free kick, Ali. Yes, he's very good at matching the and first And here's in the race. Gallagher, goal! Oh, what a superb goal! Dundee United, what up! Oh, 
Oh, that was a, a piece of great acceleration by the youngster. Through he went. Aiken could not catch him, and that was stroked away with the greatest of confidence with play. Four minutes. United are in the lead to the delight of that throng of United supporters under the enclosure. Now, Joe Miller. Celtic will want to strike back immediately. This is Miller. Corner kick. Very good strike by the youngster, Alec. Oh, tremendous goal. We said before the game that that was the threat. Gallagher through the middle with his pace. And he scored it. He took it magnificently. Joe Miller to take this. mccarthy has been very good in the air. Excellent in the air all afternoon. And uh, what do you know, we were making forecasts about the double, which is still on, I may say, for both Liverpool uh, and Celtic. And now both of them are trailing from our last information anyway at Wembley. Straight to Morris, now Malpas. Here's Eamon Bannon. Pantalainen took that very well. Fine tackle by Morris. Adelainen. With Eamon Bannon. Gallagher a little bit too hard, yes. Well, Kevin Gallagher, the boy you see there, the goal scorer, comes from a great Celtic tradition. His grandfather, Patsy Gallagher, one of the great Celtic uh, stars, major figures of the past, and slipped through the Celtic net, as it were. Great acquisition by Jim McLean. Celtic, however, will fight, Ali. This is the testing time now for Celtic. The next 10 minutes, we'll need to get back in the game. What is? That's White. Well, beautifully done. Now McStay. McAnally, close to McStay. Miller. That neat little throw interception there by Morris Malpas. Miller. Morris went for a one-two. That's not a bad ball. I think it's gone over. Up had come Rogan, as I suggested. Rogan does get towards the far post ball very well. Go kick. We played seven minutes. Down the middle again, Roy Aitken. Slightly hesitant there, that's Bannon. No. And Ali, I think this is where the great experience of these central defenders for the D United will pay off. Yes, Hegarty and Neary together over the years have been very steady and very good. And today they've just worked a treat. Here's Joe Miller. Right down there, Rogan going in. Beautifully tucked away there. Now Ferguson. It's a long through one again. Catalanen. I think a push, push on Hegarty. On 
towards Gallagher again. Two youngsters beside each other. That's a goal kick. Derek White and Kevin Gallagher know each other extremely well through youth football, Scottish professional youth football. Defenders running it difficult to defend a brilliant run by Bannon. Rogan goes with them. And ball still in play. Then that's better play by Celtic. Miller. Run by Miller and little basketball touch there by Andy Walker. Mr. Leisman, in fact, had said he'd played the ball over before he crossed it. Yes, that's it. It had gone over, I think. Malpas. Yes, you were mentioning that you think McAnally is handling McStay well. Oh, he's handling McStay. McStay has not been seen out other than the once in the first half. Just been watching. He's following him all over the place, and he's just put him out of the game completely. McAvaney, brilliant play by David Derry. Really was. Really under pressure. Morris. Total miscue and Patalainen. That was offside. Patalainen very flat. But uh, Joe Miller given offside. We've played something like uh, 12 minutes of the second half. And there is an indication of Joe Miller saying they're wasting time. And there's a long, long way to go yet. Gallagher, deep middle turn, but a uh, free kick ball there on Tommy Bunn. Morris, really playing his heart out. Bunn, McKinley. Well, that's a brilliant ball, there's no side. Gallagher. Celtic defense totally caught out there. It was not offside. Superb piece of play by the 19-year-old from midfield, Billy McKinley. That's it, Aiken. Finley again. There goes Joe Miller. He's always looked very promising in the game, and that was a free kick. Yes. The referee will have a word with Bowman. Texas, you'll get McCarthy up there and White. There's McCarthy with it. Off the crossbar, I think. Not sure if Thompson got a touch there or not. Wasn't at all happy about it. Sun in his eyes. What a kick. Billy Thompson looks slightly nervy there, Ali. Yeah, I think he's carried a little bit of luck all through the game today. Yeah, 
fun. David Bannon in the heart of the defense. It stays. Just for a moment, I thought he was going to let fly himself. Now, Joe Miller. There's McStay. Right off it. Now, there are two players having quiet days. We noticed one you've already mentioned for McStay. I think Andy Walker, who's certainly been seen, and yet gives the pair of them leeway for 30 seconds, and they can change the game, Alex. Yes, they, I give credit to the men that's marking them. McAnally's doing a great job. That was a crossbar right enough yep. from that replay there. Down to Gallagher. There's Aiken. McStay. McKinley. So did that very well. Bowman. Ooh, that's Petalainen. I must say that the United have played this game very intelligently. Away goes Gallagher again, and he won't catch that one. Got there. Ferguson. Bobby Burns. That's better play. Nice close possession. Rogan all the way round to their stop. Pulled off his back. Free kick. There's McKinley. Too much to that. gone out it wasn't a terribly good throw out I may say he's looking daggers at his fellow Northern Ireland internationalist Alan McKnight that's Anton Rogan that again by McCarthy as put up by Machiavelli. Nothing players claiming that the head went down too low. And we're hearing the United supporters have been out shouted and out sung for most of the game, not at this moment. McKinley again beautifully playing in this game. He really is. He's almost got the touches of a better nearly. Oh, he's, the young lad's been really, really outstanding. He's not, he's not put a foot wrong. He had five minutes early in the game in which he, he found experience maybe too much. But I can't express enough. McInally and him at the moment are keeping on you and de united in with this chance. Free kick to United and McKinley himself is to take this. There it goes, and Bannon! Oh! 
really a similar kind of opportunity that Joe Miller had. I think even a better one than Joe Miller had. I just watched this. It eluded everybody. Bannon coming in. Bent his head too low, very like Miller. A real let off from which Celtic might benefit. And uh, Paul McStay obviously trying to calm Tommy Buns. He said something. Roy Aiken. The goes and away by Bowman. Just a degree of uncertainty in that uh, United defence. Useful ball again. Rogan doing very well in the air. There's Ferguson, that's a useful ball. Kevin Gallagher. Now Jim McInerney to Pasolino. That's the corner. I don't think there was any way he was going to hit the ball in from there, but he gets the corner out of it. Such a typical Dundee United counter-attack. Yes, he does it extremely well, but to me, we've got to regret that miss of Bannon's because that was very similar to one in the first half. The Celtic is a club that's known for fighting back. McKinley now. Tucked away by Rogan. There's Bannon. Too much behind. Here's Bowman and I think a hand, yes. Celtic pushing the game on now. 21 minutes played in the second half. Kinley and away goes Gallagher. Great through this time. Good night. Obviously Gallagher's pace has been highly useful. There's Bannon. Burns. Miller. That's McAnally's first mistake of the day, and it's a free kick. I thought he went for the ball myself. It's another very good one, and it's curling away. And again, you just got the impression the goalkeeper wasn't too happy with that. Well, he's been very dodgy coming off the goal line. Both goalkeepers have. That Celtic's final ball has not been in keeping with the normal standards. Bannon with the nicest little death cut to the head. Patalainen. Up comes Bannon. Take it across. Oh, very good tackling. Played particularly well. What a well read by Hegarty. And I think we're going to have a Celtic substitution. The man, in fact, who turned the game in the semi-final against Hart. Mark McGee. Looks to me as if Billy Stark might be coming on as well. But Celtic have a free kick. Good position for them. A 
up it goes just away oh. that was Derek White and there's no doubt about it Celtic with balls like these giving heart attacks to these defenders now Andy Walker and White are coming off McGee and Stark come on a Bart's instruction and it means stick in there There is McGee, and I think that's gone over. It's a goal kick. And now John Clark is coming on. Interesting to see who is going to come off. It's Patalena. The big friend comes off. John Clark comes off. Tremendous bounce off this pitch. We had we had said we were out on the grass. It looks lush and very very smooth, most of it. But it obviously is hard underneath. There it goes again. Feel for hands. Loud appeal. And I think the goalkeeper, the Dundee United goalkeeper, really has to try and assert himself. Really glued to that line is Miller. Gets the cross again. There, Thompson and McAvenny. Close to him. Real Celtic pressure. Fighting back. And that was a ball across the goal. It's been troubling this defence. Bobbling about awkwardly. And whipped away. It's McCarthy. Very stark. Well, that's dangerous. Free kick, though. Late tackle. Twenty-seven minutes gone. United still in the lead. One goal to nothing. <laughs> Trying to get that ball to Miller. He has looked very threatening in the second half. Really piling on the pressure, Celtic. Billy Stark. Here's Miller. Chris Morris. Hegarty. Clark. The bell ball to Rogan, who's been coming up in that outside left position. Burns. Looking for the one two and again. Well, how many times has he done that in the game? Four or five very vital headers. Miller. He did that well. He's got the opportunity in that. It's too much. Annoyed with himself about that. And he dragged the player out. Inside out. And he couldn't match it with a finish. So 
Ron Clark, who is very useful in the air, but Celtic are winning balls in midfield. Villa just getting there. Tommy Byrne. Well, that's a very good ball indeed. Uh, well, I think Morris had to go for that. But Celtic have to strike at everything as you see a glimmer of an opening. Clark, Jim McAnally, Celtic running this game at the moment. Here's Morris. Billy Stark, the little touch. Play to the far side, here's Rogan. Right to better one to equalize it. Back to Betty. The equaliser for Celtic, it looked on the card, all the way through there. Beautiful run by Rogan, and there was McAvenny with Paul Hegarty beside him, not making an effort to go for that. A little jink to the line, and over it came, and bang, a good opportunist goal there by McAvenny. Ali. Yeah, the last 10 minutes has been all Celtic and since the substitutions have been on the cards they've put two or three balls in that's been near things but it was a beautiful goal McAvenny, I think Celtic deserved equaliser Negative, McAnally McStay, brilliant play well, there's a great ball, Villa. Great save. Oh, David Nerry, brilliant play by Nerry. Kept his nerve on his head. Well, that's right beyond now. Here's John Clark. Up comes David Bannon. What a dreadful mess. by United in the counter-attack. Oh, this is a run. Well saved. What the classic defensive play here by the tall the United man. Longer-serving member, David Derry, keeping very, very cool. And then this one here, look, laid right back into the tracks of Bannon. And he throws. about uh, 13 minutes left. Front. Haggerty and away by Malthus. No Celtic. Right into the tracks of Gallagher. Tried a 1-2 and a little bit too quick for that. Well, he starts offside. of this one way or the other and is Damon Bannon preparing to take it Mr. Kinley Bowman not a bad ball 
one front, trying to get it through. And snapshot by Gallup. Knee knock there for McCarthy. Celtic really fought back well all the same, Ali. Yeah, so think Celtic, it's really become a good, real good cup tie now. Both teams are having a go, and it's end to end, but Celtic now looks as if they could go on and win it now. Well, they're looking anxiously across towards McCarthy. I think the, and this is McCarthy there stretching out, and he bent round, yeah. Bad-looking twist. There, the jubilant Celtic supporters watching the team fight back yet again. Exactly ten minutes remaining of ordinary time. Gallica. Aiken kept to his task. Bound. Sweeping that out majestically. Miller might have a go on his own. No, he tried to chip the goalkeeper. Long and high and straight through to McKnight. Good run again by Joe Miller. Does that for very well. He's trying to chip the keeper, I think. Nice to take it by Morris and Celtic. Still wanting to come forward. And Morris. Three kick. Stay down. Both Paul McStay Miller's now suffering slightly from cramp. Burns. Well over. Eight minutes left. with David Nery to Bannon Clark that's not a bad ball across I know there's a kind of cooling wind, but I think on the pitch itself it would be very warm. We're fast approaching extra time. And all an unnecessary tangle. Ferguson. Getting out of that, Macazzetti. There's McGee. Then he follows up that with a corner kick. Seven minutes left. Time Higgins, he did go for it. No, too much of that. Swept away well by Bowman. Three kick. On 
on its day. Joe Miller. Good running by Bun. That's a good ball. Billy Stock is there. And a great save. Oh, that was a value of Stark in the air. All coming from that deceptive and hidden run there by Bunt. He suddenly cropped up there and watched Stark coming in, trying to beat it down for somebody. Like if any, almost there. Here's Edmund Bannon. It's sent to Gallagher with a chance, and he's missed it. I think he's offside. Yes, offside, it wouldn't have counted. Nice touch down there. Oh, I'll tell you what. That was very close, Ali. Well, McAnally. Pegasy to Gallagher. Ferguson. Let's say. And Celtic's distribution in the last 15 minutes or so has been superb. What a kick again. Four minutes of the cup final, or ordinary time of the cup final left. Again, that useful ball this time. John Clark was back. Tommy Burns should be cut off by McAnally and is. Morris. Stay. Now first, no hesitation. He had to cut it off. out of his goal again and this time a free kick good up as I Billy start there Billy Thompson in his goal Morris Away by Malpas. Clever throw in there by Miller, wanted to get it immediately. And I think the Dundee United scoring when he did really brought Celtic out. Miller. No kick. But it's Slided and bended away towards that far uh, post. Three minutes of ordinary time remaining. Here's McKinley. Oh, try to drift that forward to Bannon. Roy Aiken. Fun. Like of any. Here's Joe Miller. Good tackling by Bowman. Everybody behind though. No offside. Races on him. McCarthy should make this. Rogan. McKinley did very well getting rid of that again. On goes Gallagher. No very bad ball. Gallagher looking maybe slightly tired. McAvenny. That's 
for us. Got to get the corner. We're in for the final minute. similar to the goal they got against Hearts. A hit ball into the goal mouth through about six defenders. But they've deserved it in the last 20 minutes. They've really played. Here they go again. Billy Thompson. On to Kevin Gallagher. That's a good ball by Gallagher. Fields for the penalty, but it's a corner. Corner kick. Perhaps United's last chance there. Kinley with it. There's Denny down. And there goes the final whistle. The double for Celtic. A quite astonishing ending. And Billy Neil Ollis being smothered by the bench. Not only winning, but in the most dramatic fashion. A delighted Billy McNeil. And there is Billy McNeil. the supporters Celtic clinching the double. Billy, congratulations, you left it a wee bit late. We left it a bit late, that's right. Uh, we've done this a few times this season, but this team's been magnificent because they never give up. We knew beforehand the game was about 13 players, and it took the 13 players to give them the result today. Absolutely brilliant. Did you ever have any doubts when Dundee United were playing so well and they go ahead? Yes, well, obviously you've got to have doubts. Hence the reason we changed the system and changed, changed some players. And all of a sudden it came right for us. I'm absolutely delighted. Those boys have worked so hard this season and that finishes it off magnificently. And uh, centenary year, the double and your first season back. Yeah, well, I don't think I'll be here in another hundred years' time, but uh, I think that these lads will be remembered. I'm delighted for them. I think the fans wouldn't mind if you were here in 100 years' time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, Frank Macavetti, unbelievable scenes at Hampden. I think you're responsible for them. Oh, what can I say, Jack? They're absolutely brilliant, though. Tell me with that first goal, Frank. Eh, uh, no, I don't know. I just remember Matt going for that. And the ball came and it just 
that guided it towards goal, that was all. The heads were rather down by that time, uh, weren't they? No, they weren't really. They knew we could come back. And uh, we were hoping for an equaliser and we got it. And once you get an equaliser, this team doesn't know how to lose or draw. How did you and see the did. second goal in? I saw Bella Sapp coming in. And I knew he was going to put it in, in for goal. And I was hoping that someone would deflect it off the line. That was the best I'd get. But it felt lovely for me and I just put it in. And there well, are the... Dejected the United players who fought so hard with the Prime Minister, Mrs. Thatcher, handing out the runners up medal. Behind uh, her, the Secretary of State for Scotland, Malcolm Rifkin, and the President of the SFA, David Will. And we now await Celtic coming up for the cup. What's it feel like? Great feeling, it's a centenary year. year. Double celebration, we're delighted. Did you ever have any doubts? Here we go, watch that. Well, I think they're finding it very difficult to extricate the Celtic players to come up for the presentation. As a very patient-looking Prime Minister, ably assisted by Ernie Walker. And the Celtic players now coming up. And here comes the Celtic captain. Very gallantly wiping his hands free of sweat. And receives the cup from the Prime Minister. watching a scene of which he is extremely familiar. And down come the Celtic players, deservedly getting their individual cheer. Mick McCarthy and the Celtic team coming up almost in dribs and drabs are being kept back celebrating Tommy Burns and not to forget the referee George Smith from Edinburgh well what else do you expect them to do at a time like this? And in the background, the Prime Minister and Mr. Thatcher making their way out of the Royal Box. I am sure she has enjoyed herself enormously this afternoon. And so in particular have these Celtic supporters just in front of us. There have been many dramatic victories this season by Celtic in the last 15 minutes or so but surely this takes the biscuit Ali they won it very deservedly for the fight back yes I would think over the whole game they, they edged out the D United but you, you know you always feel for the underdog I think before the game, everyone hoped that the D United would give us our best. It wasn't a classic, but Celtic power in the end, particularly coming from both wings, deservedly won them it. I just get the impression that uh, the D United may not have been totally at the best, but nevertheless, they gave a lot to this game. There's no question about that. Yes, I don't think they were outclassed in any means. I think the two substitutions went against them. Sometimes they go for you, but today I felt the substitutions went against the United. And all Celtic go on their triumphal tour of Hampden Park. That massive support in the background. I think they're going to take some while before they get out of Hampden Park tonight. That 
to cut. Looks a little bit fragile, almost lost in that crowd there, but there's a firm hand on it. The man who won the cup with his double, the double-double, you might call it. I bet you he feels like keeping it. Well, Tommy's not a young thing. He needs a seat every night and again. He's been doing a little bit of weightlifting. Roy, a phenomenal support behind you. You must be immensely proud to do the double in the centenary year. I thought I'd seen a marvellous sight three years ago, maybe in D-Nation the same way. But look at this here today again, it's fantastic. It's as much their trophy as ours. Almost a replica of that match, wasn't it? Exactly, well, we came back from a dead again. We've done it so many times this season. It speaks volumes to the character of the club and the players. And Frank McAvenny never seemed to give up, did he? Mike Frank McAvenny's had a tremendous season. He seems to have brought himself alive again coming back to Scotland. He's a great player. And a tremendous sport once again to see you, Roy. We're delighted for them. It's a great day. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Tommy Burns, a pretty good feeling, I would imagine. Ah, it's incredible. Not I can't find any work. I can't find any work. Not a bad performance, your own performance for an old man. Ah, I should have keep telling him getting older, but uh, if I keep playing like I'll be playing, I'm 50. Is that a promise? Oh, it's a promise. Always sell keep hunting over there. I think the boys behind wouldn't mind that. Oh, it's been my pleasure to play for them, and I hope it's my pleasure to play for them for a few years yet. Well, you were, you were sitting on the cup. Does that mean to say that perhaps... That means I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it here with me. Good luck to you, well done. Thank you very much. I don't think, Chris, there's any secret you're a little nervous before this match. I think we were, perhaps, in the early stages. It showed uh, all credit to Dundee United. They came at us and uh, penned us back in a little bit. Um, but we were, we were confident in the end that we would keep going at them. And even if it was 1-0 with two minutes to go like it was at Hearts, I was sure that we would do it in the end. I thought recently, of course, you were playing English football. How does this compare? I've never seen teams like this in my life. It is unbelievable. Look at them. It's incredible. It's just great to do this for these people. Did you honestly believe with 20 minutes left that you'd be holding the Scottish Cup now? I thought maybe after extra time. And this is what it's all about. Be holding one of these. Makes a dream come true, honestly. That's tremendous. Thanks very much indeed, Chris. Thanks very much. And Roy Aiken, who's, uh, I think, running off today, has been asked to do a marathon round the edges of the pitch. There he is with Anton Rogan. Nice picture that, isn't it? Climbing up to get a very good view. The Hamden floodlight being used to Good effect by the Celtic support. I think it'll have to be a PA announcement to ask them to go home. signifying the centenary year. Well, Al McKnight, it was clear yesterday in training that there was a slight problem with uh, their number one keeper's cap. I think, I think Pat was realised then that there was every chance that he'd miss the cup final. Yeah, well, it was always in the back of Pat's mind that he'd miss. I didn't want to set my hopes up too high. It was a bit, it's a great occasion. I would have loved to have played. I said, I might build myself up in case, you know, Pat was fit in the morning. So I didn't get excited until this morning when the boss came to see him coming walking towards me. Pat dropped his head and I was delighted. But I was also felt terrible for Pat himself. It was an awful thing to get sat out of the a celebration, I guess. Although he's part, but it's just left out a wee bit. That was a tremendous first goal by Gallagher. How did you see it? I thought maybe Roy was going to get a touch and I stayed in my line. 
I could have maybe come out and met him a bit earlier, but he struck it perfectly into the top of the net. And I might have saved it some days, but nine times out of ten, it was going to the back of the net. I'm just glad we got two at the other end. And Frank, got Frank, Frank McAvenny just hasn't missed too many of his opportunities this season, has he? No, he had a terrible day at the semi-final here at Hampton, at, in the, into the same goal. And I was dreading if the same thing was going to happen today. For a moment, it looked like we were going to struggle. Billy Thompson had a couple of great saves. But at the end of the day, we just the next two goals, so we need it. Well done. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. Good. There we are. Looking all the way down from the Celtic support at their traditional end to the rather empty end of uh, Dundee United. Hampden Park, we haven't seen a cloud all day. The only cloud for Dundee United was that uh, two strike by Frank McAvenny late on in the game, indicating Celtic's fighting qualities again. The Celtic support quite simply refusing to budge. There they are, triumphant. Well, from Ali McLeod and myself.